My heart journey began when my father was diagnosed with cardiomyopathy at the age of 37. They told them at the time, this is absolutely not hereditary. Unfortunately, at the age of 33, my sister was jogging with her son and she collapsed and um, passed away four days later. My second sister, Gina, was at her son's track meet. She jogged to her van, came back to the track meet and collapsed in front of everyone, including her son, and she died immediately. After Michelle had passed, Stacy Mazurko, who works with Dr. Mackel and also happens to be a friend of mine, contacted me personally and saying, I really think that you need to look into getting all of you guys defibrillators. When they lost Gina, I knew that there was something that could be done and I didn't want to, I didn't want to lose Deanne. I pushed it maybe a little too hard, but I'm grateful that I did because she's here today. I contacted Dr. Mackle. She did all kinds of tests. She said, Deanne, you do have something and I want you to get a defibrillator put in. She says, if you want to be around for your kids, this is very important. And that is the big trick in all of this. You feel fine and, and you're not. I've been a runner my entire life. I was very fortunate to get a track scholarship to Ashland University. I also got to meet my husband during that process. I was told by Dr. Mackle, you just cannot run. It will only weaken the heart. I remember getting in my car and just crying, thinking, oh my gosh, my poor sisters had to die so that I could live. <laughs> in Deanne's case, her condition was a hereditary arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy, and we were able to identify the gene. Arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy is a condition that usually presents in adulthood and affects the heart muscle. The genes that code for the structure that holds the cells together is weakened. And over time, the cells start to pull apart and they become inflamed and fibrotic or scarred. And this can lead to life-threatening heart rhythm problems as well as heart failure. And if you get the gene, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna develop the condition, but we know then that we have to really follow you and watch carefully. Having an implantable defibrillator offers her protection. Some things are taken from, you get others in abundance, and I got that through my kids. My kids were all big runners, like my husband and I were. As they got older and realized, they were like, Mom, could this happen to us? I brought all of them to Dr. Mackle, and I can remember them all being upstairs, me downstairs waiting as each one talked to her, and my heart pounding like, oh my God oh my gosh, and each one would come down, they didn't have it, I would drop to the ground in tears, like, thank God. But then I was like, well then the next, next one must have it. And then they came down and said, Mom, we're all good. Our mother worries all the time, and my sister made a great comment to her one time that said, Mom, I'm doing everything I, I can to live so that you don't have to marry another child. She has a great prognosis. Most patients with this condition who are protected from life-threatening arrhythmias with defibrillators do very well and lead long and normal lives. Our kids can live comfortably because of the research and education that has been done through the American Heart Association. My mother would be grieving a lot more people if we didn't have that. We can't make major steps in improving cardiac care without funds for research. The American Heart Association has been funding research in the Cleveland area for many years. I go red because I'm all about empowering women. I go red because I love my mom. I go red because I love my wife. The reason why I go red is it is so important for women to take charge of their own health. I think in life, Women put themselves on the back burner and they don't recognize that, you know, you have to take care of you too. I would not be here if I did not.